it's Q&A time. I have planted my favourite rose, Madame Hardy, in the courtyard garden of a nursing home where I work. How do I keep it in check so it's not attacking the residents as they lead in to smell the flowers? Could I intertwine the branches to train it or something more compact? With something like this, you're always going to get the branches growing out and, you know, they've got thorns so they will scratch people. Your best bet is to probably get some uh, good solid round supports that you can fit over it so that the plant material can always be pushed back into those supports and I think that's the best way that you can go with it. You can prune it hard, you can while the flower is out take any new shoots that are coming out and heading in the wrong direction you can cut those back as well but I think the best bet is a good solid support. Is cedrith worthwhile plant in terms of longevity and easy care? Sea thrift is a good plant for coastal areas. It's a good plant for dry conditions. Probably from the point of view of looking good and remaining as a good plant, it will only look good for between five to six years. And then you will need to either take cuttings from it or get some new plants. Rosie, how do I stop ants building nests in my flower pots and excavating the soil which kills the plants? Thank you. Yes, this is a problem and we have it on the nursery as well and I haven't really got a good answer for you for this. I think the main thing to do is keep an eye on your plants and if you see that they are starting, because it's pretty obvious that they're there, they start to move the soil up the stems of the plant. So if that is happening, then the best thing to do is to knock them out. Using water is no good. They'll just come out and then they'll go back again. Um, they do it does seem to be a problem that's becoming more prevalent i have to say and in my own garden i've got ants nests coming up all over the place i tend to try and live with them but in the pots i can understand it is a bit annoying some people say a little bit of vinegar might help or some sort of lemon juice that sort of thing might just get them to move away from the plant but basically it's a matter of looking and seeing the plant material and knocking it out and then repotting and making sure you brush your pot out so that there are no ants left in it. That's as good as I can do, I'm afraid. Hi Rosie, could you tell us about tool care routine? In particular, secateurs, snips, etc., cutting tools. After a day in the garden, what do I do to keep them clean? Do I wash with water? What is the best way to disinfect them? I have seen many winter care advice videos, but would love to hear everyday tips and tricks. Well, yes, it is a very good idea to make sure that you do keep your tools clean and that they are actually um, from use, day to day use. So if they're getting muddy, if they're getting plant debris on them, then it's a matter of giving them a good, just a quick brush over or a wipe over. And then if they're really dirty, yes, just give them a clean in soapy water and then a little bit of a quick oil with a, just a little oily rag and use something like some light oil so like a vegetable oil something like that and that should be fine if you really need to disinfect them then a lot of us has probably still got these disinfectant wipes uh, that we had during the covid period and those are really good for actually wiping it all down and keeping it going so that's the best thing to do so as soon as you finish give them a little bit of a clean up and that should be fine. Hi Rosie, every single one of the sunflowers I grew from seed in pots earlier in the spring and then planted on in the garden has been destroyed by slugs. What can I do to protect them in future? This is really a real problem, you know, we've had a very, here in the UK, we have had a very wet winter. It has been ideal slug breeding ground and so there are a lot of slugs and snails around. The main thing to do, I would suggest, is to plant stuff and if you're going to put them down in the garden wait until your plants are a bit bigger so pot them up and put them somewhere high where you can watch out for whether or not slugs are going to get there then once you've put them in the ground and as long as it is not going to get wet 
then bran is brilliant. Good old fashioned bran flakes, you just scatter it around and as soon as the foot of the slug hits that, it draws out all the moisture and therefore they can't get any further. But it won't help if you're watering all the time, but if you water and then wait and then put the bran down when it's dry, that will help a huge amount and then hopefully your plants will get away and get established. I've lost most of my asters this winter. We had a very wet winter and loamy soil in the garden. Are there some asters for my type of soil? Well, usually asters, Symphia trichums, depends on which you mean, because asters are already a group and then Symphia trichum, which is the Michaelmas daisy, is another group. So there are both of those which are perfectly happy for a loamy soil. However, the winter wet was not good for a lot of things. I would suggest if you are always going to get slightly wet soils in the winter, then steer away from any of the Aster or Symphia trichum which have got hairy leaves or hairy stems. Go for the ones which have got a smoother leaf on them. So something like Good Fellowship is a really good variety. It's a good strong variety. The Nova Belgii types are very good and they will work really well. Aster, um, Devaricatus, which is now Eurybia Devaricata, that is another form as well. So go for the smooth leaved ones rather than the hairy leaved ones. Hi Rosie, when do I need to start trailing the climbing rose horizontally on a trellis? Planted it last autumn and is less than a meter tall right now but growing fast. Has reached the trellis. Rosa Compassion is the name of the rose, thank you. Well, with a rose, you don't actually want to make it go out horizontally. That's not the best thing for it. It is a plant that likes to go up in a, a nice Vs. So if you haven't got just one stem then, and you've got a few, then just spread them out in a fan shape. So a bit like this, spread them out in a fan shape and let them go up. And then once they've got to the height that you require, you can clip them down or you can start to train them round and get them to go back up again. Round and up is better than going across horizontally. I hope that helps you. Hi Rosie, I think when people buy cyclamen they're told to bury the corn just a few centimetres below the soil. My corms have raised themselves up so they're sitting on the surface. Do you think I should cover them with leaf mould or leave them or replant them please? So Corms of cyclamen actually like to be half and half, so the top above the soil and the bottom sort of on soil level and maybe a little bit below. If they are pushing themselves up, they're getting themselves into a happy position, they're growing perfectly well, leave them alone. You don't need to cover them over, you don't need to replant them, just allow them to grow as they are naturally and they will be perfectly happy. Loving all these questions and please do remember that if you try and put more than one question in we will always just choose one and then maybe that question, your other question, will then be used at a later time. But we are getting a lot of questions now from people and it's great because there's a variety and all of these questions and answers help lots of people to be able to just realise how they can grow better and what else they can do. Hi Rosie, I've bought my brother a Loganberry. Once it is planted, how long should you leave it until it needs to be cut? Thank you. So Loganberries are a beautiful fruit and they grow relatively quickly. You will plant them in, they won't be very tall and then they'll start to grow up. And really in their first season, you shouldn't allow them to fruit too much. So it is quite often a good idea to let them get to the height that you want and then to start pruning down and to shape them into the way that you want them to grow. But the main thing is don't let them fruit too much in their first season, otherwise you are reducing the longevity of the plant that you have got. Hi Rosie, my Circium rivulari atropurpureum seems to have disappeared. I have photos of them flowering last year uh, in May and there's no sign so far. I have it in a raised flower bed in a courtyard, moist, loamy soil, pretty shallow, for over four years without issues. I make sure to water it in the summer. Could have rotted over the winter spring or is it a short-lived with a deep root run? 
Okay, so you've got a couple of problems here with this. Yes, it is a thistle which has quite a good deep root run. Um, so probably if you're in the shallow, it hasn't really liked it as much, but you've been watering it, so therefore that should be okay. However, we did have an incredibly wet winter and at the age of four years of the clump, you're getting to a point where if you haven't divided it, it really needs dividing and it could easily have succumbed to the wet winter. If you're going to replace it, I would suggest that you find some with slightly deeper area for it to go in and then it will last a bit longer. Now as a plant, no, they're not going to live for 10 years. So somewhere between five and uh, seven years is probably where they should last. But after three to four years, you should be dividing them and moving them on to get them to rejuvenate. Is there an online list that is updated regularly of plants that have had their names changed? Well, yes, there are. If you go to Q Online, they have a list there of name changes, um, which is really quite specific and it is really deep, goes through everything. The other thing is that the RHS uh, plant finder will tell you whether there are new name changes but also the RHS, the plant review, lists at the end of the book, um, at the end of each one that it sends out, new plant nomenclature changes. So that's somewhere else that you can look. But to be honest, the, the Q one is pretty good. So I would look there as well. Hi Rosie, I have an azalea, uh, a japonica orange in a container. It needs repotting into something bigger. It is in flower just now, so when is the best time to do this? It is always a good idea to wait until plants have finished flowering before you do moving into the garden, taking out containers, giving them a prune, all of those. So always wait till after flowering. Now, when you wait till after flowering, then you have to consider what size pot you're going to put it into. You can give it a little bit of a dead head and prune at the same time, move it on into a bigger container, and then make sure that you water it so that it doesn't dry out because you're going to be moving it on into a container, into new compost when you start to go into the summer. So just make sure that your watering regime is absolutely tip top and that you don't overwater but you give it enough. I had a generous gardener climbing rows and at the bottom there's always an ant's nest pushing up the soil up the plant. Do I need to do anything about it? So this is yet another one regarding ants and it is, it's a really difficult one. If the plants are already in the garden and the ants nest is there, then that colony is there, I'm afraid. You can try scraping off the top and exposing the nest a little bit and therefore getting the bird. The birds will love you for it and they will come in and they will get any of the eggs and that might then encourage the ants to move elsewhere. But unless you want to really go down the line of heavy duty chemicals to kill them, I think the answer is to live with them. Unless they are causing damage to the actual plant, I would just leave it there and, you know, just live with that situation. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video of mine, YouTube thinks this one is perfect for you.